So let's look at those preparation steps. And the first one is to set up a Git repository in your Azure DevOps project. So in my instance, I've set up a repository under my TM demo project. And in there, I have committed and pushed my test complete project. So if we look at the Explorer view, and this whole project suite has been committed to Azure DevOps. And you can see if I do a git remote minus V that this local repository is connected to the origin, which is my Azure DevOps instance and that particular git repository. So now when I make changes to my test complete project, I need to make sure that I do a git commit and a git push to my Azure DevOps repository. And the reason we need that in the Azure DevOps repository is because when we build the pipeline, it will need to take the code out of this repository and push it to the agent for execution. So the second step we need to complete then is to bind test complete to Azure DevOps. And that process is completed from within test complete. And if we go to the project and we look at the project properties, there is an Azure DevOps section and we can click on the bind to Azure DevOps. And in here, you can connect to your Azure DevOps server. You can add that in the server section. When you add that, you'll be expected to enter the URL and the credentials. And once you've connected to that server, you can select it, you can pick the team, and then you can pick the project that you want to bind your test complete project to. Once that's bound to your Azure DevOps project, you'll see the server URL and the project listed there. And the next step in the preparation process then is to link our tests to our manual tests in Azure DevOps. So for my test complete project, if we have a look at my execution plan, I've got a simple web test automation project, which just starts Edge, navigates to a home page, logs in, um, completes an order and logs out again. We need the equivalent set of tests in Azure DevOps. So if I go to my test plan, and I have a look at a test suite that I've created in this example, a folder I've called new test suite. And in there I've created a number of manual test cases. And I can edit those test cases. And I've simply just put the test case title in there. You could have the steps as well. But what I want to do is then bind my automated tests to these manual tests in Azure DevOps. And I do that by looking at my execution plan in test complete. And you'll see that one of the columns on here is linked to external test cases. And in here, I can then make use of that bound project by selecting the test cases in Azure DevOps. And that will add them to the list of associated test cases. And the mapping is that one test item, automated test item in test complete can map to many tests in Azure DevOps. So I'll just remove one of those. So my homepage login test here is linked to two tests in Azure DevOps, login and test case ABC. And I can remove associations if, if necessary as well. So in this case, just one login test item in test complete maps to one test case in Azure DevOps. And you'll see those links and the traceability between those tests listed in this column once you've configured that. So that's the Git repository set up in Azure DevOps. We've bound the test complete project to the Azure DevOps project and we've linked the test cases. Now we need to set up the agent and the agent machine where we'll execute our automated tests. 
So the fourth and final step in our preparation then is to configure an agent where we want to run our automated tests. And we can do that by going to the project settings in Azure DevOps. And in the settings area, you will find a section under pipelines, agent pools. And in here you have a list of pools and a pool can contain one or more agents where you might execute your builds or your tests. So you may have a pool for API tests, or you may have a pool of machines for UI tests. So in our example, we've got a default pool, and in here we want to create a new agent. And when you click on new agent, it will give you some commands to run on that agent machine to connect it to Azure DevOps. So effectively what we're doing here is creating this agent either as a service or just a process we run manually and that will connect this agent where we'll execute our automated test to Azure DevOps so that pipeline can deploy tests to that agent for execution. And this displays all of the steps we need to follow to create and install our agent. Um, first, we need to download the agent application. So you can click on the download. And whilst that's downloading, we can start a PowerShell environment. And we can complete these commands that are specified here. So we want to make a directory where we're going to install the agent and then change directory to that. And then once that's downloaded, We should just be able to copy this command and it will unzip the agent file we've downloaded and it will extract all of the files we need into this directory we're in. So we now have a binary directory and an externals directory with some external libraries and a configuration script and a run script. So we need to configure the agent now and that's as simple as copying this command. And it takes you through a number of steps to configure the agent for this machine. Starting with the server URL that you want to connect to. We'll copy our server URL from the Azure DevOps web interface. So that's just devazure.com and then the name of your instance. Paste that in there and then the authentication to allow this agent to connect to Azure DevOps, we need to get a token. And from for that, you can come to You need to come to your settings, personal access tokens, and in here you can define a token for your agent. So you create a new token, you give it a name, and set an expiration date. I'll give it full access in this instance and we create that token, copy the token and we use that, paste it into the configuration for the agent. It's then asking us which agent pool we want to connect it to. So we spoke about the agent pools at the start here and the agent pool we want to connect to is the default one. So I'll just press enter. The name of the machine, let that take the host name. And the agent then goes off and works out what this machine is capable of running. And I'm just going to replace the existing agent that I've already got on there. And the final few bits to configure then is where it's going to save all of the 
working directories too, so that will save it to a subdirectory called underscore work. And then do I want to run the agent as a service? So this will configure it automatically as a Windows service. I don't actually want to do that, so I'm going to go with the default, which is no. And then we can do auto log on, so it automatically connects on startup. So that has configured the agent. The last step we need to do then is to run the agent. So if I do dot slash run dot cmd, this will connect the agent, start it, and we should see it then listed in Azure DevOps once it's connected. Connect into the server, come out of here, close that, and if we go back to our agent pools and we look at our default agent pool we will see under here agents and it has connected our agent that we've just configured to Azure DevOps. So this agent is now ready to execute our tests from test complete once we configured the pipeline and set up the job ready for execution.